trust in you. I put my trust, trust in you. In you. Oh, every step I take is, is a step of faith. And if my heart against me shall prosper, and every prayer I make. Jesus Christ to to our service our church service this morning hallelujah and it's at Restoration and Revival Center we are at Spring Hill Suites in Auburn California and it's 135 35 Bowman Road in Auburn right uh, directly parallel with I-80 on the frontage road is Bowman Road and you take off Forest Auburn Forest Hill uh, uh, exit and uh, if you're coming from Reno down, you would take off Bowman Road exit. But if you're headed up north toward Reno, you take off Forest Hill Auburn Ravine Road. Amen. And the, the frontage road, go over, back over the freeway. And there at DeWiener Snitchell, and we're doing a great commercial for them, I guess. Amen. What is there, a Taco Bell there too? Jim Boys. Jim Boys Tacos. Amen. And a gasoline station. Just go on that frontage road and come on up to Spring Hill Suites up on the Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we walk by faith each day. gave me this word and someone else uh, let me know that this scripture was for me as well and I'm going to receive it I'm going to accept it and believe it I'm receiving it all the way from Canada we want to welcome you uh, Pastor Harry Kitty uh, Itigik uh, from Cambridge Bay that's the high Arctic up there and it's very cold amen and the wind blowing and they have COVID uh, and the, the uh, towns even reckon in a, is locked down they, they are on lockdown. This is really sad. We need to pray for people. Amen? That are, are uh, That's in the high Arctic. And uh, we just pray for MJ. Amen? And her, her, her daughter. She has COVID up there in the high Arctic. And it's a big thing to them because there's so few people. And they don't want it to spread and, and to wipe out, you know, a community and such and so forth. And so, and uh, we just pray for MJ. I talked and prayed with her last night. Amen. And she's rejoicing. Amen. And uh, I want you to know that, that the Lord is speaking to us and telling us. What is he telling us? He's saying, it's like someone, you don't want to say this is a last chance. But we never know. One day, the Lord is going to come. Amen. In the skies. The trumpet is going to sound, and those that, that are dead in the graves, amen, amen, the graves are going to burst open. Hallelujah. The rapture is going to take place. The word of God is real. It's alive. Amen? And uh, it's it's the truth. And that's what we live by. And 
I guess for some reason the keyboard had a mind of its own and it wanted to take off <laughs> like a, um, an airplane. Well, it wasn't supposed to take off right now. <laughs> We're on land right now. We're landing. So we just want to welcome everyone to the house of God. We want to welcome everyone here. And we know that our God is a healer. There are people without electricity. We, myself, my husband and I, we are without power, without PG&E. And I'm not just trying to cry, uh, say, just poor me, poor us. No, no, no. We're blessed of God. Amen. God has seen us through. There's a greater plan, a bigger plan. And God's plan is turning hearts and lives back to him, preparing people to get ready, to get rid of hate, and to start loving one another, blessing one another, crying out, getting rid of judgments, pointing the finger and criticizing and finding fault. People that are miserable, it's time to get happy. I'm happy with power or without power. Oh, it's called luxury, you know, but I'm telling you what is necessary and what is essential is having Jesus Christ in my heart. Amen. Having Jesus and being Amen. ready for the rapture. Amen. Being ready to be caught up. And if I should die, Amen. If the Lord should take me, I want you to know, at least I know, I have got a grand and a great and a fabulous future. How many of you have a future in Jesus Christ? Amen. How many of you have your hope set on heaven? There was a song. I'm just going to sing, sing one little part of it. I've got my heart set on heaven. That's it. I've been singing uh, worship songs. This keyboard has got big D batteries in it. And after not having PG in life for about two or three days, two days, I think, and I said, Lord, I've had it. I can't. I was singing and worshiping, but Lord, I, I, need a, I, need, I need a touch here. So my husband went out and he dug out this keyboard. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he, he got it to working with the batteries without any electricity. And I'm telling you, he put it on a coffee table and I sat at the couch all bent over there in the dark. And we began to worship. Tears were flowing down my cheeks. But I had read later that it was minus uh, 38, 48, 48 degrees back where we were in the Arctic for 25 years. And then there's wind chill and all this other stuff. And I'm telling you, if I had been in that kind of weather, amen, we'd been, had electricity out for four or five days, you know, water pipes bursting and broken. We haven't been in circumstances much, much, much more horrific than here. We just weren't prepared here. How many of you know we in California, we think it's hot. Everybody thinks California is a hot place, right? But I'm telling you, there was a mess. When that snow came down and lines and transformers and uh, even rest homes and senior homes, how many people, Pastor Richard, uh, were, are without electricity and the, the people in those homes, seniors, 50 to 60? 15,000. Somewhere in the, in the yeah, there's 15, 17, 20,000 people that are without. But even the seniors, I'm telling you, and I am a senior. My husband and I are. Uh -oh. And I want you to know, when you've sat there in that cold and breathed it in, it's colder inside than it is out. I'm not complaining because I've got my heart set on heaven. And I know that God is bigger and greater. But you know what? Outside of that, we, we know that God, having Jesus, is essential. Amen? It is essential. We're praying for people. And uh, in Cambridge Bay, there in the high Arctic, there are people that are, that are a small community that called and got through last night because we didn't even have cell phone services. They literally um, have uh, uh, some, the lady that have, her and her daughter have COVID. And uh, she said, I am taking this as, while I have time, while I have a chance, I am going to turn my heart to Jesus. I'm asking for prayer for real times, big times, this time, that I'm asking God, amen, that I will live for him for the rest of my life, that I'm not going to play games anymore. Come on, folks. How many of you know that we got to stop playing games? Amen. amen. If we really repent, we turn from our sins. If you hate, you stop hating. If you stole, you stop stealing. Amen. If you're living in a life that, that is, is, is ugly and mean and hateful, that is not the character of Jesus Christ. That is not the heart of God. And if you're judging other people and you really don't know their life and you don't walk in their moccasins, you don't walk in their shoes, it's time for you, the world, the people, because this goes out to eight to 10,000 and more people. Come on, around the world, in many countries. 
I want you to know that God has told us to speak the word of God and to preach to the people the truth and to tell it like it is. We have encountered some obstacles, but God is bigger than the obstacle. What God has put into me, into my heart, is this, is that, that if, if I have Jesus, that is essential, and that's number one that I need. And if I am taken, if something should happen, and I should go, I know where I'm going to spend eternity. Can I ask you, do you know where you're going to live forever and ever and ever? Some of you on your Facebooks, it breaks my heart, you say I'm an atheist. You say, if you're a man, I like other men. If you're a woman, you say, I like other women. You have other lifestyles. You say you're another gender. But my Bible tells me in Genesis that God created he, male and female, man and woman. Amen? And he put on them the physical body parts, amen, upon their body that you can recognize when a baby is born, He's born a man, a, a male, or she's born a woman. And that's who you are. God is not. Thank you. Thank you. I know you're there. I see you. I hear you. I appreciate it. I like to say amen, and I really back up and support pastors and preachers, and I'm used to it. And we got them all the way back in the lobby back there saying amen, hallelujah. And his circumstances... I have heard from my husband that, uh, that they are here in this hotel because they have no electricity. They have no power. They have, just like us and many, many hundreds of thousands of other people in California. California been hit. Satan has done this, but God is the redeemer. God is the deliverer. God is going to deliver us. But the main thing is, is that our soul is right with God. That not just temporary. And another pastor here, I want you to know, they insisted and they came down and they paid for last night. They came down here in Auburn, touched our heart. They insisted. I did not want them to pay that kind of exorbitant prices, but they did. And we got a shower. We got a warm bed. And it was so good that I could throw off covers instead of putting more covers on. And it was wonderful. What wasn't it, brother? Wasn't it? Oh, it was so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord praise. Thank you to the pastor that did that for us. Thank you for the angel that came and uh, was able to bring gas and bring generator, bring a light, bring things that and oh, oh, so much food, so much things, so many things. We were not able to get out, but then a neighbor even helped us. My husband, we started digging out to be able to get out. Our car was on empty. The gas stations were closed. We could tell you all the negative, but our hearts were full of the love of God. We knew where we were going if anything were to happen. You know, if you were on the edge of a cliff and you were out, and I, we thought about it, sitting in the dark, it's a, it's a wonder, and uh, you begin to wonder, and you begin to think, and you meditate upon the Lord, don't you? Amen? What if this was your last hour, your last day? What if we had people, an angel that came and crossed transformers that were down and wires that were down and trees and, and with a four-wheel drive, a single woman, she literally got through younger than us, but, but also with issues and physical health issues. She, God put it on her heart for two elderly people because we were crying out to God, God heard our prayers. I want you to know God hears your prayers. Amen? Amen. But I want you to know, you think about it. If you have Jesus, I said, if I have Jesus, and I do, I do, undoubtedly. I have him, I have faith, I know. And therefore, if I am taken in a split second, I've been in car accidents before, I don't know if you have. I've been slipped through down slippery rivers and waters and, and being sucked under into the ocean into a, what do you call those uh, uh, things that suck you into the, the water and carry you out a mile or two. As a teenager, uh, that happened to me. And then I popped up when I could hold my breath no longer saying undertow. Jesus, undertow, thank you. An undertow that pulled me. Yeah. I have had so many chances. I've had so many experiences that the Lord has saved me. I'm not a cat, and I don't believe in superstition, and I don't believe in nine lives. I have more than 90 lives, believe me, hallelujah, <laughs> because of Jesus. I give him glory, I give him honor, I want to glorify him, and I thank God. I don't know 
I am a tongue talking. I believe in one God. I believe in Jesus. Amen. I believe in God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. The Creator. That's who He is to me. Amen. He has done wonderful, marvelous things, and I worship Him. And some people uh, that uh, uh, deny the power of God and speaking in tongues and don't know about it have never experienced it. They ask me about it. I tell you, I couldn't get in my car. I couldn't breathe without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Ghost. I don't even want to go to Walmart or Target. I don't want to go in on the highway and the freeway without praying over our, our car, our vehicle, even to keep the deer and the animals off and away. Amen. Hallelujah. To keep us safe. Because in the arms of Jesus, in the cocoon of God, in the presence of God, all I know is if something happens in an instant, I know exactly I leave earth. My last breath is going to worship God. It's going to praise God. And I'm telling you, if you are know your life is out of order and you're miserable and you're full of hate, that is not God. You need to turn to Jesus with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And just in case you're your uh, uh, power or your internet goes off. I'm, I'm preaching in the beginning rather than the end. <laughs> Just joking. Amen. Hallelujah. But I know that we need the power of the Holy Ghost yes. to stay Amen. up. Amen. Amen. The ups, you know, the UPS man, ups, UPS, it means God is going, he's my ups. Amen. He, he lifts me up. Amen. He lifts my soul up, my spirit up. The ups is he upholds us. His angels uphold and guard us. Amen. And protect us and help us. Uninterrupted us. power supply. Uninterrupted power supply. Amen. In the dark, my husband got that. Amen. And what I got was, hallelujah, you play, you play games, you know, you in, in the dark, you know, and we talk to one another. We had our voice to speak. Amen. Hallelujah. If not, I'd still have my mind, amen, to think and to talk and to meditate upon the Lord Jesus Christ, to give him praise, to be up. Not down. Amen. I've been down before. Come on. I want you to know God is going to bring you up. He's going to He's going to uphold you. He's going to hold you, uphold you. Amen. To keep you from falling. And it takes angels. Amen. To do that. Amen. And messengers. The word of God. U is uphold. P is he's going to preserve. Preserve. Preserve us. Whether on this earth or I'm caught away to be with him. If I'm gone, I'm still preserved eternally forever. Amen. I'm not going to die. Amen. Because I live. I live. I've been born again of the water and of the spirit. Woo! I'm charged. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been plugged in to the Holy Spirit, to God Almighty. And I'm thankful and I'm grateful. Hallelujah. I don't take for granted. Not even my Jesus or my Lord. And that's why I want to praise him at all times. Amen. And never turn back. Never turn back. Amen. Keep going forward. Pressing forward. U P. Uphold, preserve, and S, UPS. He will preserve us. He will also sustain us. He sustains us. On this keyboard, it's got a pedal that sustains. You put it down, and it just holds everything together and in place. Amen. Hallelujah. One loud sound. Amen. Hallelujah. God is going to hold us together. Hallelujah. God's going to keep us. How many of you are encouraged by the word of the Lord? This may seem juvenile to you. But maybe you didn't walk where I've walked for the last week. Or some of you others, I know you have. Amen. And because of it, my cup is full and running over. Some people have a cup. Amen. And it's full of anger. Come on. It's, it's full of hate, bitterness. They do not believe. They have no faith. Amen. Their cup is full of, 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 of darkness, of negativity. Come on. No faith. They do not believe. Their, their cup is not full of the word of God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need yes. to be full. If we get full of God, get full of the Holy Spirit, yes. and get full yes. of the word of God, yes. we're going to... There you go. <laughs> we're going to pour out all evil, all wickedness. Come on, and unbelief and doubt and fear. Amen. That's why when somebody speaks something negative and speaks the, 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 the things that, that, that's against them, I counterattack it. And I know that you have to speak it three or four or five times. The opposite. Speak the good. Amen. Speak the positive. Amen. And the negative has got to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So what we do is, I, if I had a place and I don't, it, wisdom is, I don't have a sink. I'd pour all the ugly and the evil out. And let's just say that this 
cup now is empty. Amen? Now fill it with joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, kindness, love. Fill it with the Holy Spirit. Fill it with the fruit of God. Amen? Fill it with truth. How many of you know that we need the Word of God to uphold us? That's right. Preserve us and sustain us. And it's uninterrupted power supply. supply. Amen. What is the supply? Who's the source? There's people that came and gave us blessings and gave our brother, he has a blessing. And uh, maybe you'd like to share that a little later about your blessing. Because Kathy, they were praying for gasoline for their generator and car. She asked when our phone service came on after four or five days, uh, not the phone service, but meaning we got two bars and she was able, did we talk on the phone? Yes, we did. We talked on the phone and uh, she called for prayer. We couldn't get to them all the way across another side of the mountain in between us and a canyon. Amen. But our prayers travel around the world, around the earth and everywhere. The spirit of God is not limited. The spirit of God, the power of prayer, God is everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. There's nowhere that our God cannot go. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Except he's not going to sin. He's not going to go into darkness. He's not going to go into our pity parties with us. He's not going to go into negativity and anger and hatred. He's not going to go in sinful, wicked places. But he will take all of that. He bore it on the cross called Calvary. Amen. And he took our sins. He bore our sorrow and our grief. We can turn it all to him and get filled, full. Let your cup now, instead of the, 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 the darkness and the ugly, be filled and let it overflow to help others, to reach others, to touch others in Jesus' name. So for some reason, if this, uh, we're believing that this uh, 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 YouTube and this uh, uh, FaceTime, Face uh, video, uh, Facebook, that you're going to be able to receive, that it's going to go, and it's, we're not going to have... Uh, interrupted, you know, service that is going to go all the way. But we just want to say there's many to pray for. Those that can and want to and choose to stand, amen, and we're going to pray for all those that are without power, those that are without electricity, those that are without heat, those that are without water, and we pray for all of the the, the, the first uh, uh, responders and the people that come on, the workers for the PG&E and the power people, we pray for the protection of them that, that they will not be electrocuted. Amen? Yeah. They will have the wisdom of God and know exactly yeah. where to start because it's a mess. Wires everywhere. I've got pictures of it. Amen? Not all of it, but some of it. And uh, it dumped, you know, uh, lots of snow, lots of snow and a, a cold storm. And they say there's supposed to be another road coming. And we don't know, but all we know is those try to get prepared where you can. God bring forth the finances or the people that have the finances to give to the others, amen, to supply uh, good generators, good uh, heaters, and on and on. We have more than enough because of the fact that we, 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 uh, a lady tried to help, and she has helped and blessed us. We were, were living, so to speak, compared to where we could have been in luxury. I, I know I maybe exaggerate to you, but to us, it was like luxury compared to the Arctic where we lived for 25 years. Amen. God is good. God is great. Amen. And we pray for everyone, Father God, to receive uh, Christ the power of God, and to begin to pray and begin to believe that God is your deliverer. Call out upon the name of Jesus and be saved and know where you're going to spend eternity. Number two, then you have, have God, you're on the first of the list. It's kind of like, what are the needs? We're two elderly people that we have no heat, no fire, no this. What, what They're doing it by the list of what is most important. Well, I could have told them I had failed and I have issues of separating. I could have told them all kinds of things that we have overcome COVID and then pneumonia and bronchitis all in this one year. I could have told them all the negative. We didn't tell them anything because we know there's others out there that really, really need, have more of a need that God is going to, we have Jesus. We have the power of God. But here at the last, talking about Friday, Saturday, we knew it was time. We came out and then we ended up at a church and prayed with the pastor there. Amen. When she had to thank her because she had already said she had paid for and wanted this hotel to be given to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know all things we don't. You know those that are crying out. 
And Lord, you know those that have a need of a healing, a restoration, those that need deliverance from addictions. And there's a lot of people that are on medications. And Lord, we understand and we know that they're used to those medications. Amen. And uh, uh, whether it's for diabetes or for, for whatever, heart problems, Amen. failures, that Lord, right. you were able to, to give them supernaturally. You're able to supply to them if they will ask and believe that you can take care of them to sustain them and preserve them and help them. We know that these stressful times, they're precarious. It's, it, it, it's real. But I'm telling you, God is more real. God is able to get us through every trouble, every trial. And brother, would you like to share that testimony about uh, your wife called and you, you guys asked, you needed a prayer for gasoline money. And what did God do for you and your family? We prayed for gasoline money and uh, uh, we got a call that uh, someone had $300 set aside for our propane uh, expenses to keep our generator going, to keep us warm, to get battery backups that were helping other people and God blessed us with it. Thank God for that $300. Thank you God for that provision for the gasoline to keep the, the gas go the, the not propane, generator. but the generator going. And we know that someone uh, brought us one. They brought us so many things, so many blessings, and on and on and on. And yet there was obstacles, there was trials, there were tests with it. But yet it was just enough to keep up God to bless us, to keep us insane, to keep us sane. Blessed us and blessed other people. Too. And blessed other people as well. Amen? And the provisions and such and so forth. And just the thought of someone coming to your house, come on, coming to your place and endangering themselves, someone to give. We know what it's like to receive, but we also know it's more blessed to give and we've given and given and given, but we like to give, but yet when you're in a place when you have to receive, you learn to receive and say thankful and be grateful, amen? And you know how others feel when they were down and out and they needed help. Do you understand? You know what it's like. They're like angels to you. It's like gold bars, amen, to you. Meaning it's worth more than money. Do you know what I mean? It's worth more than silver and gold. It's worth everything to have gasoline, amen, to have propane. We were using a propane bottle, uh, 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 one per hour, those little tiny ones, okay? But we even were, were, were loaned a, 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 a cooking stove that had two burners on it, but there was no, no propane in it. It was empty. We've not been able to use that. But everything else, you know what? Each obstacle God provided. And that same person came back every single day to make sure and to, and to give us more and more. And she gathered around. Every pe people were saying, I have this. My niece at, at uh, Auburn... Ford dealership, one of the management there in the parts place. His name is James. That's all I know. He said, I've got two of those green bottles. I've got two of them. And he gave them to my niece to give to us. Thank you, James. Amen. Because those things are so appreciative and needful and necessary. And believe me, we didn't, didn't have any heat on or nothing on during the whole night. And uh, uh, it only would uh, warm up just one portion, kind of taking the chill off of things. That was it. And breathing and then taking that cold air. And I thank God that we survived and others are surviving. Amen? Amen. And thank God that, that God is prepared, pre pre preparing for them to, to receive him and all the help that they need to be blessed by God. Amen? It's a blessing. We're going to go into worship now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Don, how are you feeling now? Okay, we just prayed for a man here who came and he come to church, more important. And he literally has had no gas or none of those things as well and no lights. And, and uh, uh, he, was, uh, he took an antibiotic or something on an empty stomach with no food. And I've done that once before and I'm telling you, it really had uh, an adverse effect. Father, we thank you that you've, you've touched him. We thank you that you've healed him and that he's taken away that, oh, that, that is a horrible, vile feeling. Father, I thank you. Right here in this service, God has touched someone. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's touching each and every one of us. Can you tell me what your first name is out there, brother? I'm 
Daniel? Well, we got Daniel at church way out there in the lobby. Amen. He's waiting. He can hear us. Thank you, Lord. And he's just a blessing to us. And are you one of the ones that come from a senior? You don't look like a senior. You're not. Okay. He's from Grass Valley. He doesn't look like a senior. Okay. But there's other seniors that are here. Amen. That are listening. Hallelujah. It's amazing grace. How sweet the
chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. going to go to the enemy's camp. Amen. And you're going to take back what he stole from you. He's stolen heat, electricity. He's stolen peace and joy and happiness to some. He's taken your love. Amen. And he's twisted and turned it around. He's taken your, your peace that, and the love of God that you had and your faith believing in Jesus Christ. And some of you are damning God and blaming God for things that God did not do. It is the enemy. So we're going to go there and we're going to take it back. Amen. And Satan is under our feet. And we declare for the, this mess and these things to turn around and, and, and that God gives supernatural help. Amen. And wisdom to the people. Amen. And the parts and the pieces and the things that they need, you know, the equipment and the manpower and people working together and people walking in love. Amen. And blessing one another and helping. If you have things to give, just give. Amen. When you have an abundance, God blesses you so that you have to give. Amen. And when you have nothing, you can be, you're something that you do and you can do. Amen. That God will bless you that you always have something to give. Amen. Hallelujah. Give your time. So your time in prayer. Amen. I, my mama said, I may be in a wheelchair. I may not be able to walk. I may be in pain, this and that and the other. But God, I'm giving you that pain. And I'm going to pray day and night for people. And she did. She did. Amen. So you could hear her all night long. Amen. Waking up a whole household praying. Well, I went to the enemy camp. And I took back what you stole from me. in Jesus' name, so that we can have heat. Amen. And God will provide, amen, with uh, with uh, the uh, wood, because we have not had a need for wood, but now we will be having a need for chopped wood. Amen. We're going to sing Amazing Love. <clears throat> and it's actually an old hymnal and uh, kind of wordy, so we will need the words to this if we have it. Amen. Amazing Love. How can it be that I should gain an interest in my Savior's blood. He died, he for me, I caused his pain, for he who him to death pursued. He pursued death. We're pursuing heaven as our home. We're pursuing life. We're pursuing Jesus. We're following after life, not death. But Jesus did the opposite for us. Remember, he was born to die. Yeah. Amen? We were born to live. Amen. To live for Jesus. Amen. Life eternally because of Jesus. Yes. And can it be? <clears throat> Hallelujah. And can it be that I should gain an interest in my Savior's blood? Died he for me. I caused his pain for me who him to death pursue. Oh, amazing love. How can it be that now my God should die for me? Oh, amazing love. How can it be that now my God should die for me? He left his father 
Jesus. We pray for MJ to be healed and many, many, many others. Amen. And when you get behind the camera and you get here, all of a sudden it's blank. All these people I've been praying for, you know, and this week and different ones that we know that there's needs out there. All of these unspoken requests that are out there. Amen. And my friend Viv, Vivian, amen, she knows who she is. I call her doll face. Amen. I want you to know, Vivian, you've had a, you've had a, a rough year. And I am going to prophesy and speak to you that you're never going to have a year like this again. Amen. I am trusting and believing in God that this year is going to be the best year yet. This is going to be the best year to come. I'm speaking that for my life. How many about you? I am believing that the best is saved to last. Amen. That God is going to do a miraculous awakening. Amen. The power of miraculous power. There's a friend that needs eyesight. Complete being completely free to see. Amen. Those that need to have eyesight, those that need a new heart, a heart transplant, a liver, a liver transplant, a kidney transplant, those that are on dialysis, those that are sick. Pastor uh, 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 from 
um, he's a Mexico missionary, our pastor, Randy Heckley. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, he's in ICU still, and he's coming forth and coming out in the name of Jesus That's Christ. Right. We're speaking to Pastor Randy, come out of ICU, no more COVID, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And there's people that have lost loved ones this year, and uh, people that are sick still have faith in God, no matter. Amen. If I die, I want to die in faith. How many of you want to, if you know we're someday, we're all going to die. Amen. Unless the rapture comes and we're alive on this earth. And after the dead in Christ rise, then those that are alive and remain on this earth are going to be caught up to meet him in the air. Forever we're going to be with the Lord eternally. Amen. And God's got good plans. God's got a lot of things in future in store for us. And I uh, used to have horses years ago. And my son, uh, Jonathan, had a horse, a white, purebred stallion, white horse. And uh, Cappy was his name. And I want Captain. He had a big, long name. But we just called him Cappy for short. And our, our, our sons were blessed. They were given these, these beautiful horses and beautiful things. And you know, God gave him that horse. And to, Cappy was a stallion and very, very stubborn. Cappy even bit me one time on my arm right here. And my son said, Mom, you know what you got to do? And I had to haul off and hit him right between the eyes and let him know that you're not going to do that again. And that's not in my heart to do that at all. And my son was there. Mom, you have to. You have to. I did not want to. But I don't want to hit anything. Amen? But the fact is I had to because he was coming to, to, to really you know, to, to trample me. And, and I had to show him that God was greater and God was bigger. Amen? I want you to know that Jesus is greater. He's greater than any circumstance, any situation. Look at the Red Sea that Moses and a million people behind him and all of Egypt and the Pharaoh were coming with chariots. They had bigger weapons, bigger guns. They were, they were ready and loaded and come on to come and to destroy them. But they got destroyed in the process. God will destroy our enemies. Yes. When people are full of anger and hatred and resentment, do not receive the vengeance in your heart, child of God. Do not be vengeful or resentful or try to get even with anyone. Just have the love of God, the power of God, the anointing. And I want you to know God will fight your battles. The battle is the Lord. I'm going to read. This was the word that I started with and never did read it. And it's 3 John uh, chapter 2. Amen. Uh, chapter 1 verse 2. And it says, Beloved. Who's the beloved? Who is God talking to? Beloved. Who is us, the church? Thank you, Brother Frank. Us, the church. God calls us his beloved. He loves us. Does God so love the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him should not receive, should not perish, but receive eternal life. I'm trying to say it so fast. I know I can say it. How many of you know that God gave himself for the church? For He calls us beloved. He says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Be in good health. Come on. Even as thy soul prospers. When your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. God wants us mentally fit. God wants us on our soul. Amen. Our will and our emotions. Everything about us. When you go through troubling times, stressful times. When people get robbed at gunpoint. Come on, when people uh, have a, 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 an automobile accident and they're in that trauma. When people are on shipwreck. Come on, on and, the, and you're sinking, going down. When you're in an airplane and you're losing flight and, and, and altitude and you're going down, down over an ocean. In that stressful moment, you can call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been there. Come on, and many of you have been there. You call upon the name of Jesus. And you speak the word of God. And my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power of God that works in us. We need to begin to work the power of God. Begin to call upon the name of Jesus. Yes. He works. Amen. When we go to the word of God, the word of God works and it works in us. Amen. He causes us to prosper, yeah. to be in good health. He wants our soul to prosper. That's our mental health. And so many people, they go to mental health for counsel for this and that. But they're going to ungodly people who do not know the Christ, the son of the living God. And therefore, they don't know anything else but to, to tell you uh, 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 theories, ideas, opinions, and what some other man, woman, boy, or girl wrote in a book mm -hmm. in psychology. But who is the one that created the mind? Who's the one that created all things and the eyeball and the heart 
and our emotions. He made us with a mind and a will and emotions. And he says, turn it over to me and look what I can do. Look what I can do. I want you, here's my desire, above everything, above all things. This is the word of God. God says, I want you to prosper. So many people say, oh, God doesn't want us to prosper. We prayed for a lady this morning and we, she asked prayer for someone else. And I says, okay, God says, just like with Solomon, Solomon prayed for wisdom to, to, to uh, counsel the people and give wisdom and instruct the people. The children of God had many needs and he wanted the wisdom of God. God says, because you asked right, because you didn't ask for yourself and you were unselfish and you wanted to help others, I'm going to give you both riches, amen, prosperities and blessings and good health, amen, and I'm going to bless your life and I'm going to give you wisdom, amen, on top of everything. If you seek the Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what is God going to do? All these other things he's going to add unto you. But so many people get the cart before the horse. They want the world and they want their, their health. They want everything first. They want money. They want uh, education. They want, you know, they go and they think of themselves. I'm going to think about me. And they get hurt. They get bitter and they say, put yourself first. Nobody else will think about you. I want you to know the Bible, the psychology of the Bible, the word of God, the mind of Christ says, did Jesus say, forget about all those people down there? I think I'll think about myself, Jesus said. I'll stay in heaven where I've got comfort. Come on. Where I've got a mansion, where I've got everything I have need of. I don't need anything up here. The king left his throne. Come on. And he came down to earth and was born in a stable. The vehicle that he used was Mary. And she was on a donkey or a camel? Which was it? I was donkey. thinking a donkey. The Bible says donkey. She rode that donkey. And those donkeys can be stubborn. Those donkeys can have a mind of their own. And they're not very comfortable. They're not as comfortable as a horse. They may not be as tall as some horses. But I want you to know that donkey ride could not have been very comfortable for a nine-month pregnant mama. Amen? Carrying a, carrying. Jesus, the king of kings, and he was born in a stable. Amen. He came lowly, meek, humble. But God doesn't want us to stay there, if you understand what I'm saying. God wants us to be blessed, and he wants us to prosper. Let's get beyond the poverty mentality that, that God has a baseball bat, and he's right there to, to come and strike us and hurt us for if we get out of line. I'm telling you, God will touch us. God will. We have a heart after God, and we praise Him, and we worship Him. And when we get out of line and do something wrong, we've got a conscience. God speaks to us. He talks to us. Do not let the enemy get on your shoulder and tell you lies that God hates you and God doesn't want to bless you or prosper you. God wants you to have good health. God doesn't. He wants to heal you. That is in His plan, and He made provision on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do we have another testimony out there by anyone? Anybody want to give God praise for anything? Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Mary's looking up a scripture. Or you are? No, I was looking to see if it said a donkey. Okay, yeah. I, yeah. I haven't seen where it says donkey. I don't know. All I know is, is the mode of transportation was a donkey or a camel. That was their transportation those yeah. days. So therefore, it was an animal. It's just like Jonah with a big fish. A big fish swallowed him. Was it, what are the big fish of the sea? Yeah. A whale. That's what we think. That's what we say. A whale did, a whale did, a whale did swallow Jonah. Jojo jo Jonah, right? <laughs> Amen for all the kids out there. I'm a big kid. Amen. And I love it when I teach and, and taught in Sunday school. Amen. Starting at the age of 11. Hallelujah, or younger, amen. I was giving stories and telling stories and, and just uh, being dramas and all these things. You know, I love the children. I love the baby. I love the nurseries, amen. And those babies and those children love you back. And if you love and reach out to an elderly senior citizen, most of them will, will love you back and they know you're real. If you reach out and you give your love to, to, to an animal, to a dog, amen, they will love you back. Man's best friend is what they say. But God is my best friend. We actually have a dog here today for those dog lovers, amen, because that dog needed to get warmed up too. There, I haven't heard a peep out of that dog. I did, forgot about the dog being here, but I saw the dog enter in and come in, and that's so wonderful. What's the dog's name again? Bella. 
Bella. So Bella, we welcome you, Bella. Amen. Her ears are probably perking up. I can't see her. But uh, we thank God that Bella is getting warmed up. Bella is, is, uh, is, is an animal needs to stay warm too. I read somewhere that there was a couple of birds, big, big birds in cages without heat and, and their caretakers and their owners were on vacation in Hawaii or somewhere in Alta Sierra and they got neighbors and different ones to care for and take care of their birds, make sure their birds were doing well in this outage. They weren't expecting an outage. Amen. And somebody would, every two or three days, would check on the bird. But this time, that those birds needed care. How many of you know that God cared for the animals? God made and created the animals for us. He, he put the fish and all the animals for us to eat and have meat to eat. Amen. And God had made a provision to bless us. Amen. And he put Adam and Eve over a garden and a paradise. Well, sin kind of blew all those things apart, didn't it? But I want you to know, God had a plan. Amen. Hallelujah. To take care of the sin issue. God has got a plan to take care of our sin issue. If we will humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God in 2 Chronicles, Chronicles 7.14. If my people, amen, will humble themselves and pray. Amen. If you will humble, if I, come on, we humble ourselves and we pray, God will deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. God will deliver us out of all of our troubles. There are over 8,000 promises in the Word of God. There are over 8,500 you know, 8, promises in the Word of God. So, you know, there are more than 306, there's only 365 days in the year. So there's a, pro, how many promises? 369, almost three, no, that's more than that. How many promises would that be for 365 times uh, over 8,000? Somebody calculate that. I don't have a calculator right now, and my mind is not. Uh, math I'm not a mathematician. How many? Three. Yeah. So God has provided many miracles for us. Amen. Every day, many promises. Amen. Each day. Amen. That's awesome, isn't it? Yes. That we can expect it. 365 days, and maybe three miracles or more. You know, uh, promises that we can stand on and believe. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you experienced this one? Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that's who you are. Oh my God, that's who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that's who you you are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Are you still here, Pastor, uh, uh, from, uh, from not in Callaway, but you might be here also from the north, Kitty, Itikik, and Pastor Harry? Are you guys still on watching? They have, they're yeah, locked yeah. down. They are in Cambridge Bay, and they cannot have any church yeah. there in yeah. Nunavut and Rankin and such. So we have lots of people in the Arctic that are watching besides all the other nations and countries. We thank you, Lord. Help them to be able to get this connection. Let it be smooth. Let them get the whole service. MJ, all of you, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be blessed in the name of Jesus and be warmed. They have electricity though. They have power. They have heat. We in California down here don't, folks. <laughs> Who would have ever thunk it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That's who you are, my God, that's who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing, healing every heart. I worship you. 
hearts and lives. Even in the midst of all of this, God got through to us, I believe, yesterday. And, I'm, and a person got a hold of, of, a, of one of their loved ones and said, I've been talking to this pastor and this preacher. And you know what? I need help. I need help. And I'm turning my life around in the name of Jesus. And I want to start paying my tithes. Hello. Amen. And in the midst of the storm, there was a special delivery that came to our house. Amen. A person, not this person, but the one sent somebody to pay his tithes way out in, in, a, in a mess, in a troubled area. Come on, folks. They wanted to obey God, and they did. They have, we just pray that those addictions are broken in the name of Jesus. I got a call yesterday, last night, and this morning, and saying, I'm not going to be able, because of the circumstances, to be there, but I'm, I'm praising God. I'm worshiping God, and I'm there with you in church right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray for that individual. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Addictions have got to go through the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And hallelujah. One lady said that that they feel like this is their last chance to, to get off drugs, hard drugs, terrible things. And then they made the call and said, pray for me. Amen. Pray for me. They wouldn't have gotten a hold of me on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but they did yesterday. Thank you, Lord, for the phone lines. We need our phone lines, Father, to witness and pray for these people around the world. Amen. Thank you, Father. We pray, oh God, for those in uh, Langley or BC in uh, British Columbia. The Lord has laid that on my heart, the Dixons, right now in the name of Lori and Don, right now in Jesus' name, hallelujah. The enemy tried to, to, to come and lie to you, but saying you was COVID and death and all kinds of stuff, but no, no, in the name of Jesus. Cancer is defeated. Cancer is defeated. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are healed. Touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. Just call on the name of Jesus. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that's who you are. Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. If your eyes could not see before, wherever your sickness was and your issue, Put your hand upon it or begin to believe in the name of Jesus Christ. If it's your heart, your knee, your joints, your head. Father, whatever it is in the name of Jesus, your eyes right now. You could not see. You begin to say, I can see now. I am seen. I am seen by the eyes of faith. I am believing. Amen. If you could not breathe and you did not have the breath and the lungs to breathe right now, receive your miracle around the world because God is there. God is with you. Amen. God is for you. Hallelujah. That my sternum right here, my best plate is separated from a fall just what three weeks ago, two weeks ago, and breathing in these things. But I am not confessing anything except that God is my sunshine, God is my breath, God is my heat. I'm on fire, fire, fire. The Holy Ghost is fire, amen. You shall receive uh, fire, amen. Power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Let the Holy Ghost come up on those lines out there, all around, and Thank restore, you. restore. Restore power in Jesus' name. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop working. You never stop working. You never stop working. Hallelujah. You are here. See 
that you're working even when I don't feel that you're working even when I don't see that you're working even when I don't feel that you're working that faith rise up right now in the name of Jesus that faith arise in your heart and be healed be saved be converted just lift up your hands and praise and magnify the name of the Lord thank you Jesus even in the lobby Lord let people come forth and be healed touch him Lord right now hallelujah 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 touch Daniel right now in the name of Jesus let the Holy Ghost and the fire of God burn within him amen healing in Jesus name oh way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that's who you are oh my god that's who you are oh my god that's who you are we declare amen that you're the king of kings the lord of lords your name is wonderful counselor the mighty god the prince of peace the everlasting father we thank you lord even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great. Oh. 
of his glory and grace. Well, the Lord is really heating and fired me up. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 of God is here to warm every heart, to touch every mind and soul, amen, amen, to take and relieve every every stress, every pressure, amen, every trouble, every trial, let it just dissipate, let it go, amen, and just get your mind and your hearts, turn your hearts on Jesus, amen, right now, hallelujah, how many of you want to be filled, filled, be filled with the Holy Spirit's power, raise your hands toward heaven, do not be afraid of the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit of God. It's the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Don't look to man, woman, boy, or girl, but look to Jesus right now and be saved, be healed, be delivered. Oh, let the presence of God pierce through the darkness right now. Let your light pierce through every darkness right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All violence has got to go. All domestic uh, violences and, and, and people that are just totally losing it and losing their minds and mental problems, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus that people will call upon the name of the Lord. Call out. Say, Jesus, peace be still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you will be filled with the Holy Ghost before you go out and do an act, amen, that you know is not right. Amen. If you have a need for money before you go out and steal, Ask God to provide and give him your heart and give him your life and watch God do a miracle for you. Amen. Watch God do a miracle for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Where you need a job, you need income, you need a home. Father, right now we raise up our hands towards you. Amen. We thank God for a roof over our head. We thank God for the food on our table. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Richard Birch is going to come right now and give us the word of God. We thank you for every testimony. We thank you. Call in. Let us know you're watching. Let us know that God is encouraging you and blessing you and giving you hope. Jesus is your hope. Amen. Jesus is your hope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. 
Bless the Lord, our soul, Hallelujah. and all that is within us. Bless his holy name. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for everything, Lord. Thank you, name. Jesus. We thank you for our blessings. Mighty God, thank mighty you. God, mighty Amen. God, mighty God. I'm going to move this thing over only because I don't want to have a big crash. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Well, let's just all just pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name for the gathering that are here, those that are online, those that are here in presence, those that are in, within earshot of us here in this place. Father God, that your word is going forth and touching lives, that the testimonies, the Bible says that Satan is overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And in Jesus' name, we testify of the saving grace of God. We testify of the un interrupted power supply of God that you have promised to fill every need if we will just but reach out and by faith take it 30, 60, 100 fold and we thank you God because our faith level of operating in the faith of God is rising and in turn the windows of heaven are going to open wider in Jesus name amen thank you Lord hallelujah this is Pastor Richard Hallelujah, and as you can see, rrcenter.net is our website. We're going to prepare our hearts here just for a moment to receive our tithes and offerings. Those that have come prepared, those as many have already done it. We've been, my, my wife already testified to some that have been, you know, at least three different occasions already have, and more have actually showed up at our house in this last week. We've had people who have... Uh, Oh, through our website on Square have sent and they have called and says we are going to start paying our tithes. Hallelujah. God is moving. And you know something? When you have a need, you need to sow a seed. Okay? And that's not manipulation. That's not a play on words. Hallelujah. When you have a plot of ground, it can be good ground, fertile ground. But if you don't plant the seed, you're not going to get a harvest. And that's what it comes down to in Jesus' mighty name. And God is a supplier in abundance on the level of the faith that we're willing to stand. Now, you might say, but I don't have anything right now. Just talk to God about it. You prepare however it is that God would have. Hallelujah. And we will, uh, you know, be praying for you. We do anyways. But there is something on that end. I want to read with you for a minute in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Thank you, Lord. People don't realize sometimes when you live in a out in a, uh, a community that has no electricity or heat or anything for a week, it's awful hard to put together all of the little intricate things that it makes to make this service operate. And so sometimes we say, okay, we don't exactly have it all together here right now. Okay, you go ahead and be seated for a minute, and then we'll, we'll pray over the offering in just a moment here. Thank you, Jesus. But in 2 um, Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6 and following, the Bible says, But this I say, he that sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. You got an acre of land, and you put one little corn kernel in the ground, you can't expect a whole field of harvest, can you? Yeah, it's according to the sowing. Stop and think about this. Even in the book of Genesis, after the flood, God says it will continue on this earth, seed, time, and harvest. All right? This is not a manipulation thing. I don't need your money. God takes care of me. I don't have a whole lot piled up everywhere. But you know something? God never fails. And the same thing applies for you. Some people say, well, God gives me all of my needs. What more do I want? He also said he will fulfill your desires. If you're willing to take it that far. If you're willing to stand and believe. Well, I don't, I don't give to God to get back. No, we don't do that either. But you want to know something? It comes back. Mm -hmm. It comes back. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to understand that. It comes back. On our website, you'll have... Access When you go on there, there's a donation button. When you hit that, it'll take you to another screen. You've got PayPal in which you can, you can send money through PayPal, through Square, through Venmo. In Canada, we've even got a connection, Bank of Montreal, to do an e-transfer, which is one of the ways 
we operated in uh, paying bills and all kinds of things there. Hallelujah. And we just want you to participate. And it wouldn't hurt if you drop us a line. Make sure we got your, your name, your address, your phone number so that we can get tax receipts. If that's what you need, that's fine. Uh, we can even get tax receipts in Canada. We've got a connection to be able to do that. All right. Uh, of course, understanding donations today starting this new year. And it's always good to start a good year outright. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, check. Second, Chronic, uh, Chronicles, right? My wife was talking about Chronicles a minute ago. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6. But this I say, he that sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. But he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. But you know something? Bountiful is not, uh, that word bountiful is not based upon how big the donation is. It's the heart condition of what you do give. You know, and I'm not going to read that one, but there's a story where Jesus is standing and a widow with a widow's mite, which is less than a penny, comes up and puts that money in the offering. And a rich man comes with his big bag of money. And he puts that in the offering. And he shows everybody what he's doing. Look at me, look at me. And Jesus says, that woman gave more than that man. He says, huh? She gave her pennies and I gave my thousands and thousands. And you're saying she gave more? He says, she gave out of her need. She gave out of necessity. She gave out of her heart. And in turn, she will reap. He says that rich man they gave, and I'm sure blessings will come, except, he says, he got his reward, the praises of the people. You see what I'm saying? You'll notice that we don't use names. Why don't we? Why don't we give credit where credit is due? Because some things is between them and God. We can give a testimony of the circumstance, but not the individual, because that's not our place. You see? He says here in verse number seven, every man according to According as he purposes in his heart. This is one that's been watered down a lot. So let him give. Not grudgingly. Not out of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. What he's saying is. If you want to get the best out of God. You've got to have the right heart when you give. Now does that mean I don't give if my heart's not right? No give anyway. Because that's the key to unlocking your heart. Mm -hmm. Jesus said. Where your treasures are. Right? That's where your heart will be. Simple as that. In Jesus' name. He says in verse number 8, And God is able. God is able. Say that. God is able. Whatever your need is, there is nothing that God is not able to do for you. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. What is grace? I love this definition. It is the impartation of the power of God to fulfill what truth demands. God will give you the strength and the power to do whatever is necessary to make your life the way it should be. Too many people, I've said it before, too many people have heaven as their home when they die, but they live in hell on earth. Well, what does that mean? They're not applying the power of God, so therefore the devil's beating them up all the time. We know people like that all over the world. We don't judge them. We're not here to do that. We don't judge them, but we want to give them the word of God and help them pull out of it. Thank you, Jesus. He says here, God is able to make all grace, all power, okay, to abound towards you, that you always, how often? Always. Tomorrow? Always. Yesterday? Always. You see, we may not be able to change yesterday, but we can change the results of what we did yesterday that creates problems today. He says here, God, thank you, Lord, that you always having all sufficiency in all things. What does it mean? It means that I will have enough and over. All sufficiency means nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Okay? In all things. What part of all do we not understand? Come on. And he says it this way. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. God wants to empower you 
spiritually, physically, and in every way, shape, and manner. He wants to empower you to fulfill the call of God in your life. And it's going to start right there. It's going to start right there. You want to know why God doesn't use you the way you would like for him to do? Maybe you're because you're not honoring him with the very substance that's right next to every man's heart. Okay? He says where your heart is, that's where your treasure is going to be. You're giving money to this and you're giving money to that. Guess what? Your heart's going to follow. Because there's something about that. Thank you, Lord. Verse, I'm going to skip number nine for right now. Verse number 10 says, Now he that ministers seed to the sower, God provides the seed for you to sow. It both ministers bread for your food and multiplies your seed sown and increases the fruits of your righteousness. Now let's look at that. God provides to you to take care of your needs and gives you extra over and above to be able to sow. I like the way one preacher said it. If you have a need and if what you receive is not enough to meet the need, then it must be seed. You plant that and see it grow. I actually know preachers. I've been listening to some, but I actually know some preachers who have a building fund for their church. Now listen to this closely. And they come to that point to where they were struggling to be able to continue with the building of the new church because of the problem, but they had money in the bank, but not enough to fulfill phase number two or whatever the case God put it upon their heart. They took a million dollars out of their building fund and donated it to another church to pay off their mortgage. Within seven days, God provided enough money without having a fundraiser, hello, to pay off the entire building project. God gives you seed to plant and food to eat. So that not only will you have abundance to be able to fulfill the call of God, but you're going to start seeing fruit. Everybody likes fruit. But if you don't plant the seed, you don't get the tree. You don't get the tree, you don't get the fruit. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you go ahead and come up around here. I got cords everywhere today, Lord. Well, I'm going to get this right. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we just pray for this offering representing the finances of our church here and the offerings that are coming forth, and we bless them for it. And God, for the seeds, the finances that are coming forth through our website, through <laughs> special delivery, as my wife said. Hallelujah. Whatever manner it gets there, we are going to obey God. We're not just going to determine to do it. we got to do it. And we thank you for it. Your word, word says in Malachi 3, that he says to bring all of your tithes into the storehouse. That's the place you're being fed. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you do not have room enough to contain. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And I know you're tired of me hearing it, but you know when you hear something off enough, you'll find yourself saying it. There is not one person that I know of no matter how rich they are, no matter how poor they are, that doesn't have room enough in their bank account for more. Thank you, Jesus. So why don't we get our portion? Instead of having it sitting in the bank of heaven, let's reach up and let's take it to ourselves so that we can start doing what God would have us to do. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want us to look for a minute to Luke 17, verse 11. You know, it's, it's not unusual for God to change the sermon in the middle of the service. It just seems to work that way. Sometimes it's by providence in the sense, not today, but sometimes it's by providence because uh, my wife, she'll get up there and she starts speaking the word of God and she says everything and even uses the same scripture verses I do. And I don't want to repeat Always. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I will add to, not take away, but add to what's being said. Thank you, Lord. But let's go to Luke 17, verse 11 for just a moment, and then I'm going to recap uh, just a brief amount of, of 
what I was going to share with you. Alleluia. Verse number 11. Luke 17 right here. Okay, this is, I'm going to put this into uh, a capsule for you. It came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, leprosy is not a big-time disease. I mean, it's, it's a big-time disease, but it's not a predominant disease in the world today, some places more than others. But let's take leprosy as a, as a disease. Let's call it COVID. Let's call it poverty. Let's call it this situation and that situation. What is your leprosy that seems to plague you? Something that seems to be eating away at you. It might be you did something wrong and you can't seem to find forgiveness from man. Well, maybe you should start with getting forgiveness for God. Get forgiveness from God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But he says here, he says that he came across ten lepers. They stood off afar from him. Now, we owe in customs that uh, lepers were not allowed to get around the mix. They were not allowed to get around. They stood afar off from Jesus and yelled out to him. Kind of like COVID today. You know, I'm clean, I'm clean. See, okay, and, and those that are full of fear of getting COVID and other diseases, you know, that had, and fear seems to be the number one article in their life. And it says here, they stood afar off, verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. First of all, they acknowledged Jesus as Lord. They acknowledged him as the master of the universe. And they asked for mercy. God, I've got something going on in my life because I messed up. I don't need just grace. I need mercy. I need you to work in my life to remove the consequences of the things that I or my relatives or my friends have done that are affecting me. There are a lot of people who need mercy from God from television. That doesn't mean stay away from television. Sometimes it does. But it means, what are you picking up from those shows you're watching? And you need to repent of it and get cleaned of it. You need mercy in your life. It might be the magazines. It might be the people that you hang out with that are constantly putting spirits of the enemy on you to keep you from serving God the way you should. You need mercy to erase the consequences of my actions, my thoughts, my habits. Thank you, Jesus. And they said, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. Understand, Jesus, in many cases, most cases, works within the realm of the law, the proper one. And that day, when a leper was healed from leprosy, they had to go and show themselves to the priest. Hello. I kind of, you know, they had to show themselves to the priest, and the priest would declare them clean. Jesus told them to go show yourself to the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. When did they start getting healed of leprosy? When they obeyed God. Hello, maybe that might be part of our problem. Why it's so slow. Why it's so hard for us to be able to get recuperated out of situations. Or to throw off this sickness and this disease. Maybe it's because we're not obeying God first. Hello. And it says here, uh, verse 14, the last part, and it came to pass, in other words, and this is what happened. He didn't pray over them. He didn't declare healing over them. He said, go show yourself to the priest. God put something on him, uh, them. And as they were walking, obeying God, they were cleansed of their leper. That means they were healed of that leprosy. But you see, a lot of times, sickness, disease, sin, if you want to use that expression, all right, is more than just being sick. 
It is the damage that has been done to you from being sick. That's another whole realm. Many people want to get rid of their headache, but they don't go far enough to get rid of the cause of their headache. So what happens? It comes back. Isn't that right? How many of you have had a recurring illness? You've been sick. You had the flu. You had COVID. You had all these things. And it seems like I could just never get back to normal. Well, how about if we create a new normal that's even higher, better, and above? You see, it's one thing to get rid of the damage. Or better yet, get rid of the sickness so you're no longer feeling sick. But that there are repercussions in your life because of it, that needs to be dealt with also. Okay? And it says that these people, these ten lepers, as they obeyed God, say that, as they obeyed God, were healed, were cleansed of that leper, leprosy. Thank you, Jesus. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. In other words, he started recognizing God's doing something here, so he amplified it. Everybody say that. Amplify it. You know what that means? That means get loud about it. That means start putting emphasis on it. Start here, he said, glorifying God because God's doing a mighty work. But Jesus didn't lay hands on me. Jesus didn't pray over me. Jesus didn't do those things to me. But he gave you a command, right? He said, go and do this. And as you're doing it, you see God moving, give him glory. One out of ten turned around and went back to Jesus to acknowledge him. Now, Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. Isn't that right? All right. They were headed out that way. That's a minor level. What is Jesus? He's our high priest. Isn't he? Hallelujah. So the ones had had a revelation and turned back glorifying God and went to the high priest. Catch that. All right. Jesus said here, I just changed pages when I didn't want to. Thank you, Lord. And here's what he said. Jesus answered, uh, asked him, he said, where's... Wasn't there ten that were cleansed? Where are the other nine? He says, there are not found that returned to give God glory, save this stranger. A man from another country, a Samaritan, one who was in the Old Testament, not accredited of the things of God. He saw God moving. He amplified the glory of God and went back to Jesus and started giving Jesus praise and glory for the work that was done. And Jesus said this, Arise! Go your way. He didn't even tell him, no, I still want you to go back to the priest. You see, the command to go to the priest was a test of how far are you going to take it. Yes, am I going to go with just simple word of God or am I going to go in depth in the word of God and amplify it? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus says, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. The nine were cleansed. They got rid of their headache, as it were. They got rid of their leprosy. But when you're made whole, it eliminates the causes. It repairs the damage. If this guy had a missing nose, because that's what leprosy does, has parts of your body that rots off, all of a sudden, the word of the Lord says, nose, come back. See what I'm saying? He says, arise, go your way, your what? Faith. Faith wasn't just saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. By his stripes I am healed. No, it is obeying God and standing in glory with God and see God move. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted to show that to you real quick. All right? Thank you, Lord. There are some of you, and we're going to pray for just a second here. There are some of you that desperately need this word. 
But you know what you need even more desperate than just that word? Yes, you need that word, but you need obedience to that word. You need to start doing what God says you need to do. Because some says there is healing. Where? In the house of the Lord. The Bible says that salvation is in the house of the Lord. So instead of waiting for God to come to you, why don't you go to his house? Not just call on him here in my house. I'm going to go to his house and I'll let the accumulated faith, the accumulated anointing on the accumulated body of Christ and receive from God. That's what we need to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can turn with me in your Bibles, man. I want to talk on the first Sunday of 2022. Let's start this off right. I want to talk about salvation. I want to talk about giving your life to Christ in the fullest manner. You know, we have seen so many people who have come to the altars and give their life to Christ. And what do they do? Huh? They lead church. They go right back to their lifestyle, right back to their habits. Oh, they might have, you know, I use the example that, that he can come and he can give his life to Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And let's say he drinks a lot and he smokes and he's into pornography. And so he gets rid of the alcohol and from that point on he doesn't drink anymore. So he goes home to his pornography. So he's smoking in more ways than one. But yet he gave his life to Jesus. But you got to put it to work. You see what I'm saying? There's too many people that only take Jesus as far as it's convenient for them without realizing they need a hardcore change in their life. In scripture here, I showed you on the screen, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter, his first sermon, preached to thousands of people the word of the Lord. And they said, what must we do to be saved? Peter said to them, repent. Repent has three facets to it. Turn around. Change your mind. Turn around. And then have remorse before God for what you have done in living against his rule, or against his word, against his spirit. He says, repent. He also says to be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. I'm not saying, okay, see, these are salvation levels. Do you want the full enchilada, they say? Do you want the full dose of the Holy Ghost? Do you want the full power and provision, the uninterrupted supply of power? I put it in a different order just to check up on you. <laughs> uninterrupted power supply. Do you want to have the full thing? It's like us having a little, and, and praise God, I'm not being uh, unappreciative, but I have a uh, like a 2800 uh, uh, generator, and it gets us through certain things. It basically gave us everything we needed to get Amen. through. Amen. But you know something? If somebody would have showed up with a whole house generator, we would have been living high in high heaven. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We managed to get by. Okay? And praise God for that. Amen. But God had other things that he was raising us up out of. Trust me. But what I am saying here is, is that he says to repent. Before you can do anything else in the kingdom of God, you have to change yourself. But I can't change myself. Then turn yourself over to God and let him change you. Amen. But you got to let him do it. Amen. You see what I'm saying? You can go sit in the doctor's office all day long, but unless you see the doctor, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and then, that you got to do what the doctor says, right? Take your medicine. Uh, take the whole prescription, they say. Now think of this. Once. Amen. Amen. Think of this for a second. As God? As directed. Amen. All right. Now, just think of this. We get a prescription from the hospital or from the doctor and we take just enough of the prescription to start feeling better and then we quit taking them and then it comes back. That's what happens. Many times on the bottles 
or on the, the paperwork. Now they give you a, a book with every bottle, you know. And, uh, and it says, take the full prescription all the way to the end. Well, I want you to know, God gave you a prescription too. It's this. It's called a gospel. And he gave you instructions. Take the whole thing. Amen. Take the whole thing. Vivian, take the whole thing. Amen. A friend of ours, she made a joke with me once about this. I'm, I just got to pick it up. Praise God. Forgive me for that. But uh, hallelujah. He says that repent. You got to turn around. Even if you're already serving Jesus and walking with the Lord, how many of you know we all need to repent often? Amen. Okay, and not just repenting often. We need to have repentance as that form in our life. When we have a need from God, we can turn to God. But here, Peter's talking about salvation. He says you need to turn around from the world, as I just got through prescribing. He says, and he says you need to be baptized, every one of you. Water baptism, 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 right? Water <laughs> baptism is right. Well, why is it? I was taught in church, when I first got water baptized, it was, I was told this. All you're doing is making an outward expression of an inward work. You're testifying to the world. I have ten people in my water baptism, and I'm testifying to the world, right? He said, but you know, in, I believe it's in the uh, sixth and seventh, sixth chapter of Romans, he says, when you are baptized, you are buried with Christ, and when, when you are raised back up out of that water, now you don't raise up out of sprinkle. Nope. <laughs> Come on. You don't raise up out of a sprinkle. He said, when you are raised up out of that watery grave, hallelujah, he says, you will be empowered to overcome the carnal flesh nature. That's part of your Christian walk. And then there's a third part. He says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, it's not always in that order. Yes, the repentance first. But the water baptism, Holy Ghost baptism are not always in that order. You can see that in the book of Acts. But the Apostle Paul ran across some disciples of John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. And he noticed, man, they love God. Wow. Praise God. Hi, brother. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Yes, but they didn't say, thank you, Jesus. They just said, oh, we just give God glory. He says... <coughs> Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost since you believed? Apostle Paul said that. Whoa. They said, huh, we didn't even know there was a Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lord, we can laugh. How many things of this word do we not know? Right. Come on. Right. And God says, I gave you the prescription. Take it. All right. He says, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we didn't know there was such a thing as the Holy Ghost. He says, okay. He says, what baptism were you baptized under? We were baptized unto repentance by John the Baptist. Basically, the first two of these three. And the Bible says he told them about Jesus. They received his words and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and power and spoke with other tongues. Amen. Yeah, amen. I like the way one preacher said it. You need all three. You can call it Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You can call it God. But I tell you what, let's use the real name, Jesus. Because there is no name given in heaven or earth whereby men must be saved. Saved. It didn't say in the name of the Holy Ghost. It didn't even say in the name of the Father. It said in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's the only name in which you can be saved. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says here. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. People make such a big deal. I'm not a big proponent of contention in this area, but I'll tell you this here. Jesus said, be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The singular name that represents the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. What is that name? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. You read the whole book of Acts beginning to end, preferably in one step and a, a one time sitting if you can, or break it up 
get it done quickly and notice in there what happens to people when they get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Watch how many times. I don't think you'll find one time specifically in the book of Acts where anybody was water baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost and give a cross and do all this stuff. No, <laughs> you won't find it. The book of Acts is not the Acts of the Apostles. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, you know something? He says, I got so much I want to tell you. I got so much I want to teach you, but you're not ready to handle it, right? So I'm going to give you an overview. Get baptized in the name that represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But when the Holy Ghost comes, what did he say? He's going to lead you into what? All truth. Now let's stop and think about that again. All truth. Book of Acts is Acts of the Holy Ghost. So what should we find in the book of Acts? All truth. He didn't just say do it. He showed you how it was done in the book of Acts. And we start using the book of Acts as the, as the blueprint for our actions and our lives. Now we know society has changed. Customs have changed. You know, we don't, uh, we don't live in, in uh, uh, houses with uh, uh, branches as covering, you know, especially where I live, you better have more than that, you're in trouble. Okay, but what I'm just saying is, you know, those kinds of things. But the principles in our lives. Salvation. If you want the whole enchilada, you gotta go to the right Mexican restaurant. You gotta order the right food. And you gotta eat the whole meal. Why do we always talk about food at lunchtime? <laughs> you know, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to go to another one here now. Titus. That's in the New Testament. It's the letters, the small ones. Titus. Chapter 3, verse 5. It says this here. It's not by works of righteousness which you have done. You see, this is God's work. God's in charge. All you're doing is getting plugged in to the uninterrupted power supply. How do I like that? See, you got to get plugged in. I've got a generator home sitting in the, on the back porch there. I got two plugs into it. If I pull one of those plugs, something's going to give up. Give up. It's going to go. The lights are going to go out. The refrigerator, the heater. Something's going to happen. You got to get plugged in. We've already got the gas. Holy Ghost. We already got, you see, the generator. The name of the Lord. You see? We've got the power of God. We got all of this working in our lives, but you gotta plug in. But you don't do it your way. Again, follow prescription. It says here, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. His mercy. He pulled us out of having to suffer. Now, the ultimate suffering, going to hell for your sin. You see, he saved us by his mercy. He took the penalty so you don't have to. Okay, he erased your record. When I was in Canada working with a jail up there, I, one of the things I used to tell the men that hit them so hard, I said, you know, if I go up into the office up there and give them your name, if I was allowed to, and, and they gave me your file, some of your thick file in this jail, and I says, it'll list every single thing you've ever been arrested for, even if you were just checked out and didn't do it. I says, but you know what Jesus does? See, God has files too, just like that. But if I went into the glory and looked into your file in heaven, if you're walking right with Jesus, it's going to say, paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. And my wife's out there preaching, so I can't, I don't want to bore you with that. But what I'm just saying is, it is if your record has been erased, expunged, except, except, it is page after page, and God deals with those things. There are times when we're tapping into the presence of God. God does miracles. He does healings in people's bodies that they didn't even know they needed healing for. Praise God for that. If you get close enough to the fire, you're going to get some of the heat. 
All right. But what happens is too many people have lived by a big file up there in the office that condemns them to hell and they live as if it's still viable. Isaiah says it this way. One of the charges we have is to go into the jails and get those who were sitting outside of the jail and bring them into life because there's too many that that jail has become their lifestyle and they don't know what else to do except jail or welfare or whatever the case. We all have certain things that we have a habit of doing and it may not necessarily be the way we would like it to be, but we have learned to go with the flow. But God says we need to change these things. You see, he says, but according to the mercy, he saved us. Now listen, here's how the mercy worked. It says, by the washing, hello, of regeneration. Do you know why in a, so in a sewing machine, right? I <laughs> get my mind. Uh, you know, this, this week being out there camping in the, in the, uh, in the cold kind of helps you get buried here. Do you know why that little thing inside the washing machine is called an agitator? It's called an agitator. Why? Because it beats the dirt out of the clothes. <laughs> Come on. The Holy Ghost is the agitator inside your spirit, and he is kicking things out of there. He's getting all the dirt out. Come on. Okay, we are saved by the washing of regeneration. You're going to be changed by the power of God. And, see, that and, a plus sign, that means there's more to it. It's called the renewing of the Holy Ghost. The renewing of the Holy Ghost. Hello, you can't renew something that was never new. Right? I'd like to be able to take a cabinet and restore it. But if I don't have a cabinet, how can I restore it? Right? Simple as that. Renewing of the Holy Ghost. Changes, constant changes. Salvation is not a one-time thing. It is the beginning of a relationship. A man and a woman go and they get married. They become husband and wife. It is not an all-night affair. It becomes a long life affair. Now, guess what? Guess what? Uh -oh. Anybody who's not lying to you would tell you that our marriage, their marriage, everybody's marriage, needs to have a time of restoration before God. Every marriage needs to be restored. No matter how good you got it, it can always be better. Okay? And Don's not here to harass me right now, but remember this, when you see me point a finger, I got three of them pointing right back at me. All right? Don will sit back there and he'll go, Brr! Oh, fire! You. Yeah. yeah, all right, thank you, Lord. So he says here, he says that this mercy works, it saves us by washing the dirt out of it, agitating the dirt out of us, and renewing us in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. The Bible says, Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Well, what does that mean? If you don't recognize that Jesus was raised from the dead, then I hate to tell you this. You ain't saved. Simple as that. In fact, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, right around verse number 8, it says, You have to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and that you believe in your heart. What? That he was raised from the dead. If you do not have the power of resurrection working in your life, you aren't saved yet. Simple as that. Oh, that's hard. Yes, it is. But there is an uninterrupted power supply available to you if you start putting yourself into this. Thank you, Lord. The resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Jesus in John 14, 6, he says it this way. I am the way. Say that. I am the way. There is no other way. Not Buddha, not Mohammed, not all of these other false prophets out there, not all of the uh, cultural religions that are predominant all over the world, as it were, not Islam, none of those things. Jesus said, I am the way. He says, I am the truth. And he says, I am the life, the very life that makes God, yeah. God. Yeah. You see there? So what are we saying? 
If you're going to get saved, you've got to do it through Jesus. To Jesus. And with Jesus. Because when he got raised from the dead, he empower, had the power to raise you from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he said, no man even comes to the Father but by me. I had a man just recently, I'm not going to go into the details because if you're watching, I'm not trying to identify you. This is not judgment, just a testimony. And that is he wanted to get out of the lifestyle of sin that he wasn't recognizing as sin. You see? But he wanted to do it without coming to Jesus. And he said, well, I'm going to go with this other religion over here. You know, they won't judge me. Huh? <laughs> Judge me. And I said, well, if that's what you're determined to do, then go for it. I says, but just make sure you understand this. In Jesus, only Jesus Christ can set you free. And he came back for something else. And I said, let me just say it this way here. What do you think about this? I says, if what you're doing bothers you, God is dealing with you. Simple as that. God wants to correct those things in your life. Amen. If it's bothering you, if it's hurting you, God wants to correct it in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? No man comes to the Father but by me. Ooh. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One last thing, and we're going to start winding down. You believe that? I got a bridge to sell you. Okay. <laughs> Matthew 7 21, Jesus says it as at the end part. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. Not everybody that calls me Lord. Not everybody that calls to me Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ooh, that's a tough one. Controversial to say the least. But what do you mean? Well, first of all, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, healed, and delivered. It's done. You enter into that package of benefits that God has, but you have to access them. Okay? How do you access them? Because the kingdom of heaven dwells within you. That's where Jesus lives. And uh, this is, and I'm not saying that it can't be harder than this, but this is the way the focus I put on it. And that is, nobody can walk in the glory of God. Nobody can walk in the blessings and provisions of God. Nobody can walk in the joy, peace, and righteousness of God. Just because they call, Lord, Lord. In fact, he says, if you love me, you'll do what I tell you to do. How many of you know what Jesus told you to do? Read the book. Read the prescription label. Amen. He says, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. The way you make it in to the provisions of God. The way you turn up the power dial on your generator. You see? You turn up the power of provision. You have that unlimited power supply, UPS, unlimited power supply. You can turn that up. How? By doing the will of my Father. What is the Father's will? Pay attention to Jesus. Follow the Holy Ghost and allow God to rule in your life. It will change you forever. But not one time. That forever is an ongoing cycle that continues to happen. The next verse after that says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, <laughs> haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't we even cast out devils in your name? It's not based upon what you did yesterday. It's based upon what you're doing right now. I know preachers. Who used to preach hellfire and brimstone? Man, I'm not kidding. You could feel the heat coming up. You could feel the conviction power of the Holy Ghost and the signs, wonders, and miracles in his services who are serving Satan today because they didn't continue to go higher in the things of God. They allowed pride to come in, and pride comes before a fall. You see what I'm saying? All right. He says, many will say in that day, Lord, Lord. He says, haven't we prophesied in your name? And I will say, rightfully you prophesied and wrongfully you prophesied. There's both. 
And he says, didn't we cast out devils in your name? And in your name, we did many wondrous works. Can you see in that verse, I prophesied. You see what I'm saying? I cast out devils. You've never cast out a devil in your life. It's the Holy Ghost that does it. You see what I mean? You didn't prophesy. The Bible says when a man prophesies, it is the Spirit of God dwelling within him that is speaking. So you didn't really prophesy. The Spirit of God did. He says, in your name, didn't we do wonderful works? No. In his name, he did wonderful works. You just happened to be the mule he was riding at the time. Come on. I don't want to be crude, but you know something? That applies in a lot of cases. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. And then he says, Then, at that time, when you are trying to declare, Lord, Lord, he says, I am going to profess. I am going to decree that I never knew you. Yeah, he knows who you are. He knows your name. He knows everything about you. He said, but I didn't have a one-on-one -on -one experience with you ongoing. If you were divorced 20 years ago, you're no longer having, you're not supposed to be having an experience with your first wife. Come on. But there's a lot of people who want all of the benefits of the first wife plus the second wife. Whoa, come on. <laughs> we can laugh, but trust me, it's true. And then... Will I profess unto them I never knew you? And then he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Now, a lot of people say right there, he's cast into hell. Well, I won't necessarily go that far, but it could be. It could go that far. But what I am saying is, he is saying, here, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you are too far away from me. Because of the iniquities in your life. Okay, now, let me start, go down to the basics. What is an iniquity? Yeah. I'll tell you what God spoke to me. Yes, it is sin, but it is a different kind of sin. It, the way that God spoke to me, an iniquity is anything that you hold on to in your life that will eventually manifest itself as sin. Now, I'll, I'll give you a little testimony here. Okay? When I first really gave my life to Christ, I mean, I had a confrontation with God in my bed all by myself in Vietnam. I had a call of God to preach, but I didn't, quote, unquote, say the sinner's prayer. I didn't do all of these things. I knew what was going on, and it changed my life. When I got back, I went to a church, talked to the pastor, play, prayed and played, but prayed and gave my life to Christ. After a couple of months of going to church, I went to the pastor's office and I said, you know, you're going to be so proud of me. And he said, why is that? I said, you know, one of the things I've always loved to do is when I get home from work, and I, I wasn't married at that time, I says, I, I, says I, I love to sit down, watch a ball game, open up a can of Michelob beer or a bottle of Michelob beer and a block of cheese, and that was heaven to me before I knew Christ. I says, do you know I haven't even been tempted one time to pop a top since I gave my life to Christ? He says, well, praise God for that. What a testimony. Now, let's take it further. I says, okay, what's that? He says, I want you to go home. Uh -huh. I want you to open that refrigerator. Uh -huh. And I want you to pop a top. And I said, what? He says, and pour it down the toilet. He said, because you may be feeling good today, because that's in there and you're resisting it. But you know something? The day will come, because it always comes, when you're going to be tempted and tried and under pressure, and all of a sudden the devil say, hey, remember that beer that you love so much that's in there? That's comfort food to you. Huh? Come on. I haven't had one since. Praise God. Praise God. And you know, that's long time ago. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lord. That's what iniquity is. Sometimes we carry with us. Okay? I knew, I knew a man once. I'm, I'm not trying to be crude, but I want to make sure we understand. This. I knew a man, a preacher, who carried a nude photo of a woman in his wallet. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, you know what his downfall became. Lust was building. Lust was building. 
and not necessarily for that woman, but for a woman. You understand what I'm saying? Iniquity. Anything you hold on to long enough it will eventually manifest itself as sin. You have unforgiveness in your heart. That's called iniquity. Why? Because if you keep unforgiveness in your heart long enough, it will wind up creating cancer. It'll wind up destroying you and everybody around you. That's called iniquity, the sin of iniquity. It is the very seeds of sin that have not manifested yet. Or you squiddled down and thought you got rid of it. He says, I never knew you. You that work iniquity, you are maintaining and holding on and, until this thing manifests itself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to stop right here. So everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I can always tell after I start talking about food. All of a sudden, you can see everybody's over here sliding a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And at first, I thought, man, they got such a hunger for the word. Yeah, in the form of tacos, burritos, <laughs> McDonald's. You know what I mean? Kathy likes McDonald's. I know. You know what I mean? Those are the kinds of things. All right, but you see, this is that first Sunday of the year. It's time for you to understand we got a whole year ahead of us now. We got to get it together. Don't wait until December 31st of next year to start getting your tithing in order and getting yourself financially stabilized with God. Start today. Yeah, I mean, I don't have it right now. Make a make it right with God. I'm going to start doing this. God, you provide. I will take care. Simple as that. But it isn't just money. It's not just the tithing. But like Jesus said, where your treasures are, there your heart's going to be also. Where is your treasure? You see what I'm saying? All right. And God will start moving in our lives. And what about your health? I'm going to start looking, reading up scriptures on health and deliverance and freedom. Hallelujah. But you know something? You got to quit blaming God for all the bad things that are in your life. Hallelujah. Got to quit causing ruffles in your, your, uh, uh, your life because, you know, waves in your life simply because of that. My wife's back there getting ready to do that, and I said ruffles. <laughs> That's potato chips. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lord. But what I want you to say, to say here is it's time for us to get serious with God. God will get serious with you on the outward. He's already gotten as serious as he ever could. Because he came to earth, lived a sinless life, died for sins that he didn't commit, and literally went to hell. The price of sin. Some people don't think Jesus went to hell. Read the book. The price of sin is hell. He had to be raised from the dead. He had to pay the ultimate price, the Bible says. And then the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, because of his righteousness, raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. And it's time for us to be raised up out of these dead bodies. Not just when the rapture comes. Hey, I want to already be three feet above the ground when the rapture comes. That means I'm rising up. I'm going to allow God. To get us going. Once in a while we get all excited. We start jumping. Maybe we won't come back down. Hallelujah. All I'm saying is it's time. There's too many people living in hell on earth. Living under the rule and the reign of the enemy. Of the results. Maybe not of our sins. But it could be our forefathers. Could be all kinds of different things. I'm not trying to make excuses for anything. Now Father right now in Jesus mighty name. Anybody here or online. Or on video. Lord God, that hears these words, your word says in Romans 10, 6, that you supernaturally put faith on the tip of our tongue. And God, when we declare Jesus Christ as our Lord and believe that he raised from the dead on the third day, we shall be saved. You know what that means? The generator is turned on. I found this out the other day. My generator ran out of gas. But I was too lazy to take the stuffing around the door that filled the air cracks because you have to have a way for the cords to get in. So I filled a, a small gas can of gas. I walked in the snow all the way around to the back. I filled up the generator. 
pulled the choke if it needed it, pulled the cord, got it running, sounded beautiful. Got all the way back in the house, nothing would work right. You know what happened? I forgot to plug in. Uh. Now, uh, guess what? There goes I, but for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we just receive everything that God has to have. We are going to repent, turn around from our wicked ways. We are going to, and you know something? If you think you did something wrong and you didn't and you repent of it, guess what? You get blessed just for repenting even if you didn't do it because you had the right heart when you did it. Just in case. Repent. I'm going to be water baptized. Hey, we got a swimming pool out here that steams off from it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Up in the north, hey, so some of you know that are watching this, we baptized people in the lake when the temperature was 10 degrees below zero. We had to break through the ice in order to do the water baptism. And every single one of those that got baptized will never, ever forget it. She stayed up on the top and just played music, and I had to go into the water. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jesus. But anyway, all I'm just saying here is repent, be baptized, and let's take it all away. Hey, if you're going to have the enchilada, you may as well have the chips and salsa with it. And that means be baptized, be filled with the Holy Ghost overflowing. Allow the power of God and plug in to the ultimate power. My generator has got a round little connector for a 220. And then we've got the 110 outlets. Well, you know something? Let's plug into the 220 and get a real jolt. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We just yield to the presence of power of Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. The church will rise. We will rise in the Lord. His spirit is with us. His word is upon us. We will arise in the Lord. Oh, it's time to arise. The church will rise. We will rise in the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We've been without power at our house for five days. Obviously, you can't wash clothes. So, I'm just going to wear those clothes anyways. Why bother to wash them? My car's got a whole big bin full. We're going to the laundromat from here because there's still no power at the house. But guess what? I'm not going to put those old clothes back on. But too many people are used to wearing the same old clothes and they need to get washed. Yes. And my wife says it. They need to get washed if you're from down south. In Jesus' name. We've got Let's go on with God. Amen. the power in the name of Jesus. We've got 